All right. I'm going to wait a couple seconds for people to join. Now I got energy that is exceptionally high today. It's late where I am and it's quiet. I can't yell or scream like I want to. And but first, before we get started, I'm going to tell you why my energy today is so high and why I think that wasn't the reason. Today I made a coffee called AeroPress. This is a coffee at home that you make and you kind of weigh your own coffee and it's this hipster thing where you plunge the coffee through. And I use extra coffee and I was wired, man. I was hyper as, as hell. And I was like, well, that's okay. You know, it's like drinking a double, a double coffee. You expect that energy to come down. But I drank this coffee 14 hours ago. And do I look like I'm falling asleep right now? Do I look like I'm tired? No. So I was thinking, man, where, where is this energy coming from? Because I had a full day of work. I wrote, I uh, went to the gym. I ate a burger. I mean, I talked to some friends. I, I did a lot of stuff today, and it's really late where I am. Yeah, someone says lay off the, lay off the crack. It, it feels like crack, but my energy is the Trump energy. Trump inf infected me. He infected me with the energy that he has. We got 25 days left, people. 25 days left. And I hope you see with the energy that I got that I'm ready to go all the way, and I think you should be too. So. Let's start today. Now we got 150 people in. And by the way, last night we had 1,000 people on. And I have no idea how the hell we got 1,000 people. But uh, I am satisfied for all 164 of you here right now. Okay, first thing that I want to tell you is I am worried about you and the motivation. I see, I mean, you know more than anyone else that the media is full of shit, man. The media is full of lies. They're in the can for Hillary but yet you see a bad CNN report, you see uh, another hit piece, and you freak out. You flip out. And I'm thinking, come on, did Trump get to where he is right now because that stuff that the bile, the vomit that the media puts out matters? Is that how we got here? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And I just, it's sad to see really well-informed men who know the media is full of crap affected by what the media says because we already know that you know the trust level of the media is 15 percent it's more people trust congress than the media but yet when the media puts out their latest wave of crap it still affects you you are allowing the media to get into your mind even though you know they are liars because you worry what the general public will think of the lies that the media says. Well, I'm here to tell you that it no longer matters what the media says. It doesn't matter. Stop caring. Stop being worried or concerned. It doesn't matter anymore. We have transcended a level that even me, I'm kind of shocked, that it no longer matters what the media says. Proof of that is me. I mean, I was shat on by the media, man. I was completely shat on. I'm still here. And my voice is still out there to where you are here right now and you value the opinions that I give. I am proof that the media doesn't matter anymore. Trump is proof that the media doesn't matter anymore. So please, if you see a new article in the Washington Times, what, I mean, excuse me, uh, Washington Post, the New York Times, it doesn't matter, man. It doesn't matter. It no longer matters what the media says. I don't care if they pump out a billion articles tomorrow saying the worst nonsense ever. It no longer matters. Stop being concerned. Stop allowing the media to get in your mind, man. The media is running psyops on you even though you already believe the media is full of crap. How did you let that happen? You are choosing to let the media affect you. Okay, but listen, we got this, okay? We got this. Um, the fact that Trump is still here with us and it's been a week since the grab the pussy tape came out, you know, and Trump is grabbing by the pussy, the media, man, man, Trump is going to crush Hillary. She, he's going to crush her. And I would yell if it wasn't so late where I am, but Trump is going to kick the shit out of her, man. I, oh, I am pumped. I'm not going to sleep tonight. I'm not going to sleep tonight, man. Look at me. Do you, does it look like I can sleep tonight? I had my extra dose of coffee 14 hours ago. This isn't coffee right now that's driving me. It could be the beard. I don't know. Maybe 
maybe this this beer is giving me is giving me energy, but I am pumped because we're gonna win this shit, man. We're gonna win it. Oh. All right, I better calm down. Okay. So okay, I think what we need to do, I think this is a <laughs> some of the comments. <laughs> see a doctor? Oh shit! Oh man, and this is real. I'm not acting, man. You. You can see the friends I was hanging out with today. I was wired, man. We were at a coffee shop. I was banging on tables. Let me tell you a story right now. I hung out with a group of men. One of the men is a Hillary supporter. Now, he's not from the United States, so I didn't get angry at him. But this man was supporting Hillary, man. I, oh, I just, let's just say that we had a conversation that was very long. I shut him down, man. I shut him down. He's uninformed. It's so easy to talk to Hillary su supporters because they are uninformed. It's like, now I don't want to insult this man here, but they're like children, man. It's like, how do you convince a child? You overpower them, goddammit. You overpower them with the energy that you got with the conviction because people who support Hillary have zero conviction. They know she's crooked, man. They know she is crooked. They People who support Hillary know deep down in their souls that she is vile human being. She is vile. They can't put 100% of their faith into her because they know she's full of shit, right? So whenever you encounter a Hillary supporter, you can shut them down with just energy, with just, con with just, con and that's what I hope that you can do now, because I think we're at that stage now. I know a lot of you have jobs, you're in school, and you can't really come out as a Hillary, uh, excuse me, a Trump supporter, a Hillary hater. You know, you have an education to pursue, you have employment. But I think we're being pushed against the wall to where we don't really have a choice. We have to, as much as we safely can, I don't want to cost anyone their job, but we got to come out of the Trump closet starting now. I think it's time, whether on Facebook, whether uh, somewhere else, I think you really need to start to share the fact that you support Trump. Now, it's not necessarily to convince the Hillary supporters. It's not that, but it's to give morale to other people who support Trump. Because they, are, they are, are out there, but they feel lonely, they feel isolated, and by you coming out maybe through a Facebook post, maybe through, I don't know, maybe you get into a conversation, maybe you drop a comment in a bar, then you can kind of give them, hey, I'm not the only one. Because you have to think back to when you first started to take the red pill, when you first started to uh, lean away from what the media was telling you. You felt alone. You were like, is there other men out there like me? Are there other men that believe in the same things that I do? And then once you started to meet these other men, then you felt encouraged and confident. So I think we have to do this with Trump now. And the goal is this. Again, the goal is not necessarily to convince people to vote for him, but to give encouragement, motivation, and confidence to people who are already inclined to vote for him. That's it. So basically, there's other sympathetic Trump supporters out there that just are not sure. Is it really the right thing to vote for? Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm the only man on my block that wants to vote for him. But if they start seeing little percolations out there from other men that are coming out of the Trump, the Trump closet, I mean, listen, it's now or never. I mean, if we, I don't, I don't if we are not able to come out right now, when can we? You know, if we, I mean, are you just gonna wait until it's completely safe, until it's completely 100% safe for you to come out? It's never going to be that way. If you are on the side of Trump, it is never going to be 100% safe to come out. And again, I don't want to get you fired from your job. That's not what I'm doing. But this, I mean, there has to be a moment where you're like, man, life, staying in this Trump closet may mean that I'm going to be boiled like a frog slowly. So yeah, I'll have this job, but every year it's going to be harder to maintain this job. They're monitoring everything I'm saying. I'm one wrong comment away from being fired. So we all have to pick that moment where it's really time to come out. So, you know, I can't really guide you exactly when to come out, but uh, that's where we're at, you know, and, you know, uh, war is coming, right? 
war metaphorical wars come in so you can only hide for so long you know there has to be a moment where you do come out okay now my energy i think you can see is starting to come a little bit down i expended i just think i just had some pent-up anger and rage that i had to unload on you guys okay uh so we're gonna give the boost to other trump fans i think we may have to do a coming out of the closet day i don't know but i think starting this weekend you know, start to take bit, start to take baby steps by doubting the establishment line. Maybe posting a vague meme on Facebook or something like, like that. But we can't keep we can't keep hiding. Again, don't lose your job over this. But there has to be a time. There has to be a moment where you just come out. Okay. And also by coming out, this really demoralizes Hillary voters because they are sensitive as hell. If they see one. Trump fan that is out there and, and like, fuck yeah, I vote, I'm voting for Trump. They're like, oh, how, how is it that this man votes for Trump? Doesn't he read the New York Times? You know, so they really freak out when they see just one Trump fan. But if you see a Trump, uh, excuse me, if you see a Hillary fan, you, ex you expect that. You know that that's part of the establishment. They're part of the zombies, right? So, but if they see a Trump fan, Trump fans aren't supposed to exist, right? Because, I mean, who, who would believe, who would vote for a racist and a rapist and this and that? So I think just by coming out also, you really demoralize Hillary fans. Okay, let's see how are the uh, comments. Good, yeah. Okay, so third thing I want to talk about. So I have four things that I, I want to talk about as I expend all my energy upon you is uh, Trump. I think Trump made the decision this past week after the grab the pussy tape came out and after he crushed Hillary at the second debate, I think after that and the response and the groping stuff, he made the conscious decision to go all the way. Now, I think there was a point in the election that Trump would have just kind of if he lost, he, he lost and he would go back to his business dealings and things like this. But the Rubicon, I think, for Trump in his mind was definitely crossed. I think he is, you know, you know how do you get into this guy's mind? But I, I can't, but I feel it. I feel that he's ready. He's like, man, what am I going to go back to? You know, I'm going to let these people who I feel I'm better than rob me. And I think he has made the conscious decision to go all the way. How all the way it is, I think he's at least going to, if he gets cheated, uh, declare that the election was illegitimate and really challenge it in court at the minimum. I don't think he's going to fade softly into the night. I don't think he's just going to give up. I don't see that because he wouldn't be doing all this stuff right now if that was the goal that he was going to actually do. So I think that's what he's going to do. This is his last thing. I mean, look, he is 70. I mean, what, you know, maybe he's going to live 10 more years, right? 10 or 15 more years. He likes his McDonald's. So, you know, we don't know how much longer he's going to live. But I, I'm starting to think in his mind, this could be his last stand. He's like, you know, his ball is against, his balls are against the bricks and he's ready to you know, do everything that he can to keep it going. Also, a second thing, I think, now this is going to sound a little bit weird, but I really think he has transcended a new layer of consciousness. I think he's not the same man that he was a week ago. With the level of calm, I think he is speaking to the people through a direct line now. There's no filter in between him. There's no uncertainty. It's like something is aligned within him that he knows what his path is. And uh, the best analogy I can give you is in the Matrix movie is when Neo got shot and then he was dead, but then he woke up and then he can see the lines of code and the, and the agents are coming at him. He's like, no. And he didn't even have to try. With one hand behind his back, he's hitting him. I think Trump is there. I think Trump is really at this point we don't know exactly what he's doing in private, but I really think he's transcended something. He's gone up because there's supposedly nine levels of consciousness. Uh, the base level is just normal biological, you know, you're eating and shitting and breathing. And the top is where you're aware of the cosmos. And I think the level 
the, the level under that is where you're aware of the the genetic the, the genetic DNA that you have. But but anyway, that's getting a little complicated. But the point is, I think Trump he he jumped one, and I'm jealous. You know, I'm jealous that it took the whole world basically the most powerful people in the world and who are who back the media who back Hillary had to attack him for him to really achieve this state of mind to where he is in the zone now he is on autopilot i honestly if i was him i would fire every advisor that he has is do what he feels now he needs to you know in in game when you learn game and you suck at it if you be yourself you won't get you won't get anything but then when you learn what the skills are when you gather enough skills and you're good with it then you can be yourself right so i think trump is at the stage where he needs to fucking fire every consulting firm that he has almost you know every advisor just do what he thinks because i think there is right now no one in the world that is more qualified than Trump to know what Trump should do. He has achieved a level that no other man alive in the United States has ever felt. No man in the United States has been attacked like this man has. So how can you advise him? You know, how can you advise him on something that only he has ex ex experienced? So I think if, if Trump is uh, watching now, which I'm sure he is, right? Tell him, just do what you feel. That's it. You don't need any logic. Just close your eyes and you feel it now. You see you see the code, man. You see the ones and, and the zeros. Be careful about taking advice from anyone because really, you're the only man. You are the expert. You are the number one expert, the only person who can beat the establishment at their own game, get in the zone. You have tr Your whole life is coming down to this moment that is going to culminate on November 8th. And I don't think anyone is qualified to tell him shit, you know, so even me. So I'm telling Trump to take my advice of just doing what he wants to do. Okay, oh, man. Okay, and the, and the action items I have for you is, number one, to vote. You have to vote, obviously. I mean, that would be a travesty if we're all Trump fans or whatever and we do everything for him and then we don't go out there and vote. The second thing is to mean, to spread the, spread the truth. We are in the middle of an informational war. I mean, this is war. Like, the, they launch attacks, we respond, we launch attacks, and they respond. This is a war. And as of right now, it's a Cold War that the weapons are not being used. But, you know, it's kind of easy to go from a Cold War into a hot war. Hopefully not. But uh, I feel like every day the odds of the war getting hot goes up. Uh, and in addition to coming out of the Trump closet to your intimate circle, as long as you don't get fired or anything, uh, I think it's time we have to run game on women who are in the middle it's time to stroke their lovely hands and say, baby, it's going to be fine. Trump is what we need. And you got to talk to them. See, Trump talks to men. He is really stern. And it's like when he does his rallies, he's basically yelling and screaming, right? I mean, it, but it's good energy. And it talks to you because you're a man probably. There's probably only 10 girls who are watching this now. You're a man. Trump's talking to you. but And women do support him, but not more than the previous Republican candidates that we have had. So he's basically getting the same amount of sub, of support. So we need to talk to women. They, they need emotional assurances. You know, you, we, we have to imagine a future that is great with Trump and all this stuff. Women need an extra layer of game. Trump is a billionaire alpha male. He probably never had to talk his way into a girl's pants. I don't think that he ever had to do that. I did. But he never had to talk his way into it. Girls liked him when they saw him. You know, not like, say, with me, where I had to run that game, right? So he, I think we have to, he needs to learn either he has to get Ivanka to do it or Melania to do it, but he got to run a little bit of game on, on, on the women because logic doesn't work on them. These facts don't work on them. I mean, I think we all know, anyway, guys who are in game, we know what works on women. And you have to, you know, build that comfort, build that, build that, 
trust. A little bit of cocky and funny is, is good, but that stern, you're talking to them and lecturing to them, that's not going to work. So I think he really needs to alleviate their concerns because, you know, women want to feel comfortable when they vote for you. It's not that they like your energy. High energy is going to get a man's vote, but it's not going to get a woman's vote. So I think that, you know, if you know women who are in the middle, I think it would be smart for you to, you know, game them in the sense of, look, this is why Trump is good and walk them through it, make them feel at ease, monitor their bio signals, their breathing and shit, and then just, you know, gradually put it on and make a gentle case, like almost like you would make a case in order to sleep with them. So that's what I would do. <clears throat> and the last thing, the advice for you, is to be a little bit, seek Zen outside of the media establishment. They're full of shit, man. There's no, don't worry about what the media does. We are past the stage where what the media does or says matters. It's, it's past. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about if a Trump, new Trump tape comes out, Trump used the N-word, Zen. Doesn't matter. No longer matters anymore. We pass the stage. Because what they're doing right now, they're just, it's not even they want these accusations to stick. It's really just a demoralization campaign. They want you to doubt that Trump is the real deal. They want you to stay home. So just achieve Zen. I mean, I think we're starting to project a lot of, us are starting to project our own psychological insecurities and doubts onto the candidacy, right? Because this is really intense. I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, you shouldn't have cause to be concerned, but we are starting to project our own insecurities upon him. So I think we just got to trust him, trust in, in Trump. He's achieved a higher level of, of consciousness. He has transcended something something that I am jealous that he has able he has been able to do that. Focus on the goal, people. There's 25 days left. It doesn't matter anymore. I mean, short of a world war, which they may use, you know, short of that, we, it doesn't, I mean, we are in the home stretch and we're going to win this. We're going to crush Hillary, man. We're going to fucking crush her. You know, I'm just confident about it. I feel good. Man. I feel good. I feel, I'm, I'm 25 days out. I feel great. You know, because if Trump doesn't win, it's, my ass, man, because I'm probably on some lists that freak. I'm on, let's see, the Southern Poverty Law Center list, Anti-Defamation League. I've already been attacked by the same journalists that are going after Trump. What do you think all the journalists are going to do if Trump loses on November 9? They're going to focus on us. So we got to, Trump has to win. I mean, also for to save the United States, to make America great again, but to save my ass and our ass too. All right, so that's all. I, I don't know how long that was, but uh, I think I'm sure you can see who I started the video. My my energy was crazy, and now it's a little bit down. So let's. I'll have five minutes or so. Let's see what you guys. Is there anything that you want to ask me a question and an answer? I'm reading the comments now. Roosh needs a cigarette. Yeah, I don't. I don't smoke, but good vibes to all. Mm -hmm. Russia thought, okay, Russia right now, okay, first thing I have to say is this, just because the United States is currently the evil empire doesn't mean by default that Russia is good. This isn't a Hollywood movie, it's not Star Wars, where there's one that's evil and one that's good. In the real world, they're all shades of, of, of bad. They're all sage of uh shades of self-interest and greed and power, power hungriness. So Russia is still looking after themselves. I firmly believe if you list, if you read the writings of Alexander Dugin, who is one of Putin's advisors, they do want to reestablish the Soviet empire. I mean, not maybe the Soviet Union, but they do want to establish some kind of empire. This is why in the news you've seen Russia wants to reestablish base, bases in Vietnam and Cuba. But they're less evil than the USA right now. But they're gonna take they're gonna take advantage of whatever misstep the United States makes from this point out to expand or to at least solidify what their power is. So listen, Russia is in my mind, they're their own country with a self 
interest that involves increasing their wealth and power, just like every other country out there. But are they going to save us? Are they, you know, are they the light of good? I don't see that. I just think of themselves as an opposing force that is currently less evil than what we have to deal with in the in the USA. And so that's all I have to say about that. Is there anything else? What do you use in your beard? Not a damn thing, man. Nothing. This is it. I do a light shampoo every day just to get like food and stuff out. I don't put any oils. Uh, I brush it and and that is it. Where are you at um, from an undisclosed location? I don't think it's a good idea. But as you can see, it's late here. It's really late. And so obviously I'm in Eastern Europe somewhere probably. Oh, who's... I thought I saw someone. I thought I saw someone coming in. I'm freaking paranoid. Uh, Putin spy. <laughs> You're almost at 1,000. Are you in Romania? I cannot confirm or deny. Why do people want to know where I am, man? Come on. It's being kind of nosy, no? I like your cave photo. Yeah, that's my second home. Am I the only one who thinks regardless of the outcome, our movement can't lose? Well, yeah, the movement is not going to die out just because if Trump loses, they're not going to die out. But they're going to have the leverage to hurt us more. So, yeah, we may grow, but they have a lot of power. And, uh, you know, I think having our guy in the White House at least will help us out. Is it? I still, we still don't know what's going to happen if Trump does win, what he can really do. But, hey, I'd rather have him in the White House than not, because at least he won't come after us. And that's the main problem that I fear, is that the first thing Hillary is going to do if she wins is not start a war with... Russia, but come after us. And she, you heard it in her alt-right speech. She's going to go after who? Alex Jones? Man, if I, if I was Alex Jones, I'd be scared shitless, man, if, if uh, Hillary wins. But uh, she's going to come after us first to make sure that we can't hurt her anymore. And then she's going to do whatever her globalist sponsors tell her to do. Is Cernovich in danger? Not that I know. Um... You know, I, I don't I don't think so. I think he's pretty smart. I think he's a smart guy, and I think he's taking the proper uh, pre precautions against getting get, getting hurt. Uh, I don't I don't know specifically, but there's nothing I've seen that say that he is in danger. I think he's doing really great great work, man. This man, that guy, he he just a year ago. I mean, it seems like he was involved in GamerGate, and then one year after that, he's involved in constructing the narratives that affect the U.S. presidential election. So he's doing some inspiring work. And, uh, you know, if guerrilla mindset works for him, I'm sure it works for a lot of other guys. So I'm glad of the work that he is doing. What are you going to do if Hillary wins? Get a permanent visa overseas? You know, I already made up my mind even before Hillary to get up and leave. I think from a cultural standpoint, the USA is in trouble. It's kind of... It's. I think it's probably past the point of return, so I just got up and and left. Uh, my self interest in the United States is the family and friends that I have, and my I'm still connected to the USA. You know, obviously I'm a, a citizen, so I could still be harmed too. But yeah, I made even if uh, Trump wins, you know, I and if he kind of can solve the problem or calm things, I just want to live my own life, man. I just want to live my life just to write my write my books, go to the gym, not have to worry about being attacked by the media or by my government or by nonprofit organizations that are connected to the government like the SBLC and the Anti-Defamation League. That's all I want. I don't, I don't want to be involved in politics, but politics came to my front step. You saw it in February, which I detail in my book, Free Speech Isn't Free. I just want to live my own life. I don't need this. You know, this, while I like connecting with you on Periscope and all that, I just like to write books. I like to write, I like to write articles, you know. So that's what I definitely want to just go back just to doing things, cool things that help other men and that are, are fun. But to worry about Civil War, World War III, and worry about Hillary's going to clamp down on us and pass crazier laws, hate speech laws, 
uh, rape culture stuff, man, I don't want to w- worry about that. I was talking to a friend earlier that we were looking at how like the year 2001, before 9-11 happened, man, things were kind of cool from the standpoint that, you know, the culture wasn't that bad. We had that era of free love where you can have sex with any girl you want without being accused of rape. There wasn't this authoritarian clampdown. The media would say more truth than they do now. And of course, by 2001, they already were halfway through the program that got us to here. But it just felt like a calm time. Like, why can't, you know, I kind of wish we can go back when things were more calm. We didn't have to worry about it. But we can go back. You can never go back in time. You know, you can never go back, resist that effort to get all this nostalgic. But you can't go go back in time. We have a mess, man. What a mess that they made, man. Go, they failed us. They failed us with their multiculturalism, their equality, their free trade. They failed us in a big way and we have to suffer for it because it's hard to unscramble eggs and they're trying to scramble as many eggs as they possibly can as quickly as possible so we can't fix it. It's like putting a poison pill so that, you know, but anyway, what are good dick pills? I don't know. Well, Vitamin D and fish oil. Where can we buy this ROK t-shirt? It's coming, man. Opening a store is a lot of work. Jesus, hell. But they are definitely coming, uh, hopefully, within two or three months. As a Mideastern man, why the beard? Because God gave this to me, bro. God gave me this beard. Do you think God will be happy with me if I take this off? He gave it to me. How many men have this? How many? Like three? Three men in the world have this, man, and you want me to shave it off? Are you crazy? No, man, I'm going to keep this beard. I want to see how long it really grows anyway. And uh, as you can see, man, it is crazy. Like my chin stops at like here, and it's like, whoo, it's freaking heavy. Like my neck has gotten twice as big. You can't even see my neck anymore. Anyway. Oh, okay. My energy is coming down, guys. It's coming down. It's coming down. Is there anything else you want me? Because it's getting late. I gotta go to sleep. Bruce turning into Gandalf. Hell yeah, look at all that white hair. Yeah, it's the migrant chic, you know, the beard, the leather jacket. That's what all the migrants wear. How can millionaire shitlords reach you by email? Roosh at roosheve.com. Anyone can email me. How old are you? What are, is, are these people new? How old am I? That's 37. Scott Adams gave up today. Scott Adams, he's, a, he's an interesting guy. You know, I think I, I've known of his, car, his cartoons for a long time. And his, car, his cartoons are cool. And then his politics stuff, I, I don't, I'm not on the same mental w- wavelength. So I'm reading his stuff, but it's not, it's not really hitting me. I, I don't get it, kind of. I don't know, maybe I'm just dumb, but I don't really understand. I think he's... I don't want to say he's overanalyzing, but he is explaining it from a really more complex stage that I don't know if you need to go there or not, but I mean, a lot of his stuff, it seems to have have helped a lot of guys, but I don't know if he's running game on us. He says one day is for Hillary, one day is for Trump. I don't, I don't know what he's doing. If Iran becomes a superpower, are you going there? Yeah, because I don't speak the language, man. I mean, what am I going to do there? Have you watched Dick Sanders? No. Uh, yeah, I just I, I, yeah, I see some comments on Scott on Scott. I I just, I mean, I I just don't know. I don't get it. I don't get what his intent is, and that's not meaning that his work is bad, but I just don't understand it. Like someone like Mike Cernovich, I can understand. Alex Jones, I can understand. Milo, I can understand. I understand. I I feel like I understand the purpose of the communication that they're trying to give me. But with Scott, I think he has multiple layers. So he's saying one thing in the article, but there's an intention that is separate. So you have to read be, read between the lines to get the actual meaning. But I don't have time for that, man. Just tell me. I like writing that is is clear, you know. So I'm, if you read me, there's no reading between the lines, except for the stories I do. If I'm doing a fiction story, yeah, I want you to read between the lines because you have to understand. I can't right now come out and say, oh, how to overthrow your government, how to stand up and resist. I can't do that. But in a fiction story, I may 
I may put the rules in there, but not say it out loud. I may make a character in a fiction story really explain uh, what you know you can do, but you that's but then you have to interpret it. But in my nonfiction stuff, you know what I say is really what I intend for you to to completely understand. And as for, I was watching an Alex Jones clip, and he was, so he was getting riled up, he was really angry, then he started crying, and then he got angry again, and then he started smiling. So, for Alex Jones, man, Alex Jones is a very interesting guy, you know, and it's, a lot of people ask me, is he faking it? Is he really crying? I, you know... I don't know, but he has been more right than anyone else, and he's been doing this for a long time. Some people say he's controlled opposition, controlled by the Jews. You know, look, look, I don't care, because he is more truthful than anyone else. My only complaint of his channels is that there's a bit of fluff to get to the no to get to the signal. So the signal is a little, a little bit low. Like you have to watch a one-hour clip to get like 10 minutes of good stuff, which I, you know, that's just the, it's like a, it's like a talk radio entertaining thing. So I can understand it, but me, just give me the information, you know? So that's uh, the only thing I would say about Alex and Alex Jones. Have you seen Scott Adams interviewed by Alex Jones? No. But man, one thing Trump, if Trump wins, he, he better appoint Alex Jones as some kind of office. Cause Alex Jones has done a lot of work, man. Alex Jones was one of the first to get on the Trump train. Alex Jones has a huge media network, which reaches millions of people a month. I mean, Alex Jones has really done a great job. So I think Trump, I, I don't know if they're in contact, but Trump definitely um, should thank Alex Jones if he does win. What should Trump do about the rape charges? He shouldn't do, he shouldn't do anything. Just say... It's a lie. It's full of crap. Uh, these people are lying, lying, lying. The media is lying. They're in for uh, Hillary and pivot to a talking point on the WikiLeaks, uh, pivot to Hillary breaking the laws and the emails and how she's trying to dis dis distract from uh, what the matter of the election is. Yeah, I mean, it's it's almost like, man, okay, one thing. I, actually, I'm glad that that man, he asked that, but... What they do, they toss a mound of bullshit at you. And even though it's utter bullshit, you still need to spend time and energy to refute it. And that time it takes for you to refute the bullshit, man, that kind of takes you off track, puts you on the defense, takes your eye off the prize, alters your goal. So it's just the accusation, just the piece of bullshit which screws you up, even if the bullshit is made up. And the best way to deal with the bullshit is to immediately toss bullshit back that they then have to deal with. So if Trump gets accused of something, he needs to come back at her with bullshit of his own that is kind of based on truth so that Hillary now has to spend all that time dealing with the bullshit that Trump threw back. Because the whole point of this bull crap that they send, that uh, Hillary is sending over, is to dis is to distract him, sabotage his campaign, waste his supporters' time in trying to debunk it. So you really have to, as quickly as you can, it's like a hot potato. So there's throwing the accusation, and without holding it, without squeezing it, you know, just throw it right, right back at her. Are you still in Croatia? No thoughts on Dave Rubin. I know he does. He does some media interviews on YouTube. That's all I really know. I haven't watched them. All right, I got a couple more minutes, guys. I'm tired. If you watch the beginning of this clip, man, I was full of energy. I was going crazy. People were like, "Roosh, you got to calm the fuck down, bro. Calm down." And then, but now I got it out. You know, I'm really glad that I just got it all out. Do you think the media is encouraging the left not to vote for Hillary? Um, well, they are going to rig the game anyway, so they don't really care who votes because they're going to try to 
they already have in the battleground states they have i'm pretty sure they have calculated how many cheating votes that they need to turn it into hillary's i mean the less engaged the electorate the better that the establishment usually does it, it, so I, I do think that there is some truth in that they're trying to keep everyone home definitely want to see a molyneux interview with Rouge. his clips are long man i mean i try to i mean i don't have 90 minutes to watch like an interview and i i it seems good a lot of people tell me that Molyneux's um, interviews are great, but it's really long. And I think he puts out a lot of stuff. That's why his channel is big. And But it's just, I mean, who has time to really, I try to catch little tidbits. What is your plan against David Futrell? Let him kill himself through heart disease, diabetes, or whatever. I mean... <laughs> You know, a person like that is already suffering in life. I don't I'm not I don't even need to waste time trying to add on to it. Oh, and I want to show you a little like a a sticker that I have. It's a pink it's a pink folder. But look, Trump 2016. Now, just because it's pink doesn't mean I'm not a man, okay? It was the only folder that they had. They only had pink, and I needed a, a folder, so I bought pink. So they probably think I'm gays for, for Trump or something. Oh. It's salmon, yeah. <laughs> Are you back in D.C. now? No, I timed it so I wouldn't be in the United States during the election. So uh, I'm in a safe house. Did I fart? No, that, was, I was, that, that wasn't a fart. I would never fart. All right, guys. I'm getting tired, man. It's, it's late here. I had a long day. And tomorrow I have to work. And did you bang that chick at the RNC? <laughs> That's funny. No, I, I wouldn't take advantage of a young girl. Do you think I'm sexist? All right, guys. So hey, it was really fun, man. This Periscope was one of the fate was one of the probably the most enjoyable I've done. I brought the energy. I hope my energy has rubbed off on you. You know, I really do, and I think it's not so much the energy that we're going to need for the next 25 days, but the calm but the psychological calm and zen to block out all the crap that they're going to throw at us and stay the course. You know, so I think that's what we're probably going to have to do. High energy is good. I'm not saying it's not, but really we're going to have to start to adopt a little bit of zen. You know, just don't worry. Be everything is going to be fine. Start to come out of the Trump closet, start to convince other people, get the votes out. We got 25 days left. So I hope to do one of these sooner than later. So I hope everyone has a great night. And last thing I want to say is that Trump is going to fucking defeat Hillary. He's, he's going to crush her. Crush! God damn it. Oh, okay. All right, guys.